Hey guys, it's Alicia and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about my June wrap up. Oh my word, I had a crazy TBR. Um, and I actually read all but one because I didn't get that book in the mail at all. So, other than that, I read all of the books that were on my set TBR and I actually read a couple more that weren't. So I'm going to talk about all the books that I read in the month of June. The first book that I read or technically finished in the month of June, I think I started it in May but finished in June. So anyways, that is The Accidental Guardian by Mary Keneally and I rated this a 3.25 out of 5 stars. Uh, I talked about this a little bit in my mid-year book freakout tag and this was probably my biggest disappointment of 2018 so far. I had so many expectations and so much anticipation surrounding this book. I was really excited. I really liked the idea of this. Um, but it really, really, really fell short for me. And this is about Trace Riley and Deborah Harkness. And Deborah and her sister and two young kids are the only survivors in a wagon train massacre and Trace finds them and he takes them back to his home to keep them safe because hello they're the they're witnesses so they're in danger and they want to find the bad guys and there is no civilization for miles and miles and miles so he takes them back to his homestead where he has a couple stable hands or barn hands whatever I don't I don't know what you want to call them um the romance in this was very, very quick. To me, it seemed like they wound up together because they were both lonely. And that's the only reason why they got married. They got married really fast. They barely knew each other. And for how much Deborah says that she dislikes men in this book, like she has tons of reasons for disliking men, she's instantly okay with marrying Trace. Um, it just seemed really weird. Her... Mary's voice in this book was very strange to me um almost and I, I hate to say this because it's not bashing Mary I love her but it was almost amateur um Trace was very in a weird way Trace was very well written because he wasn't very book smart so he had a very kind of weird thing around I don't know how to describe it it was just a bummer. Um, you don't really see the kids a whole lot in this book. That's going to be in book two. And I'm very, very, I should say, I'm very, very excited for book two. Um, it's about Gwen, who is Deborah's sister. And I'm, I'm just really excited about that story. How this book ended, I have a feeling that book two is going to literally pick up from where book one left it. I said in my review, and I'll say here, I can't remember if I said it in my video or not, if this was a novella, if this was short, I feel I would have enjoyed it so much more. It felt like a lot of these pages were just placeholders, and there was a lot of repetition and things that really didn't have to be put in there. It just seemed kind of empty almost. But if this was a novella to the series, I think I would have enjoyed it a whole lot more. Again, nothing against Mary. I don't want this to come off as bashing her because it's not. Um, I ha I struggle giving low reviews. It's really hard for me because I don't know how to word things, especially things that I don't like. But this was definitely, definitely a huge disappointment. And I was kind of nervous to start off my, my month of reading with a book that I wasn't a huge fan of. But don't worry, it picked up and I read some amazing books. If you hear noise in the background, I'm very, very sorry. My siblings are home and they are talking and making lots of noise. So that is what you are hearing and I apologize in advance. The next book that I read in the month of June was More Than Meets the Eye by Karen Whitmire. I rated this a 5 out of 5 stars, obviously, because one, it's Karen. And two, it was an amazing, amazing story. This follows Evangeline Hamilton and Logan Fowler. Evangeline and her adopted brothers, uh, Zach and Seth, 
became, they were orphans and they became a patchwork family in the beginning. The prologue will kick you in the gut and the epilogue will kick you in the gut. Um, I, this book brought tears to my eyes from laughing so hard and just from all of the feels. I absolutely loved it. Evangeline has a condition and I'm not even going to try to pronounce it because I know that I'm going to butcher it. I'll just give you the English version. She has two different colored eyes. <laughs> so back in this time, nowadays we think it's really cool, like not even going to lie, I totally wish I had that. But um, back in this time period, it was looked at as a curse or something was wrong with her. So it was not cool. It was not cute. And as an orphan, it really messed up her options to get adopted. And then when she grew up, it really affected how the townspeople saw her. And everybody thought that the family was kind of weird because they weren't related by blood. But everybody just thought the Hamilton siblings were very strange. And instead of Evangeline letting that affect her in a bad way she harnessed it and turned it around and just she was such a light to everybody she met she was always happy she was hilarious I she was just this bright fun bouncy character and I just really really loved her and I loved Logan and he was he was seeking revenge for something that happened to him and he was planning on using Evangeline as bait and then he fell in love with the little wood sprite and he just fell under her spell. And I love seeing his change in character. He was always a gentleman through and through, but it was really fun to see his little tweaks throughout the book. And there was a mystery line running through this, a very small one, not to take away from the main romance plot, but it was just fun to see and it added a little spice to the story. I absolutely loved it. And I'm very, very excited for Zach's story whenever it comes out. We have been getting hints about it on the Facebook page. And I'm just really, really excited. And I can't wait to see if this becomes um, a, just two books in the Patchwork Family series. Or if she'll make it three or four. I don't, I don't know how she's going to do it. So regardless, I'm very excited to see where it goes. The next book that I read in the month of June was Unbreakable, and I rated this a 4.5 out of 5 stars, I believe. Um, I think I rated it a 5 out of 5 stars when I first finished it, but then I started thinking about it and thinking about the middle and everything that was kind of happening, and I lowered my review just a bit. It might even be 4 stars now. I can't remember any... Regardless, I loved, loved the story. I did get stuck in the middle. Um, I felt like it went up, like great climax, and then you just kind of sat there. And, which is kind of strange, and I don't know. I was just kind of getting lost and kind of bored. I really did enjoy the story, the ending to a beautiful series but I have book two has definitely been my favorite of the series so far I was kind of bummed but I think there was just so much hype around this book and I was expecting the crazy plot twist of book two and book one and yes do not get me wrong Sarah knows how to write a plot twist there are tons of plot twists in here but I saw a lot of them coming I think just because I've I'm so I was so invested in these characters and I was so invested in this trilogy that I just kind of could see some of the stuff happening and some of them I saw before uh Ileana even saw so I was just like waiting for her to catch on but it was really good there is a huge plot twist towards the uh last three quarters of the book that blew my stinking mind, which I also talked about in my mid-year book freakout tag, but it was really good and bittersweet to see the series end, but I'm very excited to see Sarah's next release. Um, this book we get obviously the ending of the trilogy 
and we get to see more of these characters we get to see a little bit more character development and honestly Eliana was annoying me like she did in book one she did get on my nerves a little bit in book one um, but she was definitely getting on my nerves in this book but like again I was just I was seeing the plot twist and I was seeing these things so clear and she wasn't and I think that's what was bothering me is that it was just kind of dragging out uh, yeah, I don't really know what else to say other than this cover is beautiful, and I did enjoy it, and I did like seeing the series wrapped up. Next is A Defense of Honor by Christy Ann Hunter, and this this is book one in her Haven Manor series, and this is following Catherine Fitzgilbert, or Kit, Lord War Wharton, who uh, just goes by Graham, that's his first name. Um, this book was so, so good. I... Rated this a 4.5 out of 5 stars, and I really, really enjoyed it. There were a couple parts of the book where I was kind of getting uh, bogged down, but just, uh, there's a lot of information in this book. It's a lot heavier than her first series, the Hawthorne House series, um, just because it's dealing with a heavier topic that was going on in history during this time of illegitimate children, and... It was good. Don't get me wrong. I'm really, really excited for book two and three. But Kit was kind of getting on my nerves. She had a lot of guilt. And again, I use on my nerves, getting on my nerves really loosely because it was her character and I understood her character. But I was just waiting for that redemption of God forgave you so you need to learn how to forgive yourself. Like I was waiting for that to click in her mind that she was forgiven. So those moments of self-doubt and just like she's never going to be forgiven and grief and guilt and everything was just kind of like, but you were forgiven like forever ago. So that's the only thing that really um, bothered me about the book. I loved Graham so much. He was so patient and his perspective completely changed throughout this book. He got this purpose and this renewed vision and he was just great and he was so great with all the children and I just really 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 enjoyed it and I have an idea of who I really would love Jess to fall in love with but the synopsis and stuff aren't out for it yet um so I can't tell by the back of the book but I have I have a hope for him but we'll see but I'm very excited to read Daphne's story next and to read more about Haven Manor and yes, I was very excited to read this. It was a very, very good book. And the cover is beautiful. The whole series is going to look great on the shelf. The next book I read was Never Borrow a Baronet by Regina Jennings. And I rated this a 4.5 out of 5 stars. This is book 2 in her Fortune Bride series. And it was so good. I loved the story so much. It was about Patience Ramsey and Sir Harold Orwell. And I absolutely loved Harry. He had this roguish rake persona that he tried to put on. That's what he was trying to push. Because he was actually into some things that needed to be kept quiet. And this is a fake engagement story. And I love those. So patience go to be the companion type assistant to Sir Harold's aunt and she actually said that Patience and Harry were engaged and that's what started it and Patience just went along with it after some things you know they explained parts of why they needed to do this engagement and it was just so fun to see it all unravel and he was just trying to be this break and he was just trying to be this terrible person and he just wasn't he was a gentleman and I loved patience she was so sweet and witty and just she could snap back at people like she was just great and there was a little bit of mystery and there was like things going on throughout the book and it was very very good and I absolutely loved it this book that I read in the month of June is Falling For You by Becky Wade and I rated this a four out of five stars I, they broke up really like caught me by surprise I was not expecting that I will say I enjoyed this 
Much More Than True to You, which is book one in the Bradford Sister series, and I'm very excited for Brit's story, which is book three. Um, but this book was more mainstream than I thought it would be. Um, it dealt with some he heavier topics, um, but she Becky still kept it light. It's very contemporary, modern day chick flick writing style situations, very modern situations, and it kind of took me by surprise, but not really because I guess book one was kind of like that. But I was getting to the point where I was just kind of like, do I really like this? Do I want to keep going? I love her writing style, but I was just kind of getting like, okay, but where's, where's the, what is this going to change kind of thing? But at the end of the book, it all wrapped up and it made so much more sense. Um, so I'm really glad that I pushed through it because I was going to give up about 120 pages in. Um, but then once it, I got to why they broke up and why they were so mad at each other, it made way more sense and it just kind of all fell into place. And in the end, I re did really enjoy it. Um, but I would watch who I would recommend it to for sure. Overall, it was a cute story. Um, but I don't know. I just had a couple issues with it. But again, I liked it and I really liked the subplot that they had running through it. Um, of the mystery disappearance type thing. It was really, really cool because it's not technically dual century, but she did include some portions of dual century to it. She did that with book one as well, so I have a feeling that just kind of runs through her books or maybe just the series. I don't know, but I really did enjoy that. And I liked some of the secondary characters. Definitely Brit, definitely Xander, and I cannot wait for book three. The next book that I read in the month of June was Falling for the Cowgirl by Tina Radcliffe. This I rated 5 out of 5 stars and oh my word it was so good. I love Tina. She has become a new favorite author of mine. She knows how to write a romance. She knows how to write a hero and she knows how to write a heroine. AJ was so great. She was a little stubborn. That was like almost a running theme throughout the books of June. but. It all made sense at the end. They, they're they giving these characters great reasons for having the characteristics that they do. So I will give the authors that. Um, AJ is stubborn and hard-headed, but she's like that because she is trying to make her way in a very male-oriented um, career. And that is being a farmhand or a director over farmhands and stable hands and working at ranches. Let me tell you, as somebody who works with horses, um, I was very, like, I could see where AJ was coming from. It is, if you're wanting to get into these positions, those positions that she was trying to get into, it is very, very rough. Um, especially for how Tina wrote her. She was beautiful and she was sweet and kind of charismatic and just had this outgoing attitude until, you know, life brought her down to the fact that people were spreading rumors at her old jobs and stuff. But if you're in the rodeo and you're in this, like, deep into this world, the girls are normally buckle bunnies um, or they're just... They hang around the cowboys and they're just, you know, they're not normally girls who really put their back into it. Or they're rodeo stars of barrel racers and pole benders and just, there's a whole other women's aspect to it and the women's sport. But they're normally not farmhands and they're normally not in charge of um, people. They're not in big executive I don't want to say executive because it's not really executive. I don't know. They're just normally not in positions of power like she deserved to be in. She grew up on a ranch. She grew up in the saddle and she definitely deserved it. But she fought hard to get where she was. Travis did not believe in the beginning. He did not believe that she deserved it because she was a woman. He had that idea. But... I have never seen a character change so fast and in such an amazing way because he, like within the first couple days, he went from thinking that, you know, she's just going to drop out, she's not going to be strong enough to do it, to like, 
relying on her heavily and it was so great I loved the romance it was very timid at first because she knew the repercussions of getting involved with your boss and the stigma ar around that especially in this world she understood all that and it was just great and I absolutely loved it because it's horses and cowboys and cowgirls and I loved it also Tina did a amazing research there is a rodeo scene in this and I absolutely loved it um and as someone who works with horses I was happy to see um brushing techniques being done correctly and just little things that just made me happy because it was accurate so I was very I loved this book so much much more than I thought I was going to I thought it was going to be kind of cheesy in all honesty but I loved it but I love all things cheesy so it could be cheesy to somebody else but it wasn't to me I loved it this book was The Story Peddler by Lindsay A. Franklin I was going to buddy read this with a wonderful lady that I met over YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and things we are both bloggers but she had some wonderful life things come up for her so we weren't able to buddy read this book this time but I'm so happy for her and I totally understand why she couldn't buddy read with me um but I still read the story peddler and I rated it a four out of five stars this is following Tanwin I believe is how you say it and she is a story weaver and she tells stories and strings come out of her hands and create these stories and this world you can only tell crowned stories and only sing crowned songs there's a select group of weavers and color spinners and singing people they have these talents who know the truth and know that this there's a darkness plaguing their country and their area and it needs to stop and so there's a light that's running through and something happens Tomlin stories something comes a uh, bright yellow string or a bright white string comes through and that's very dangerous for the royalty so this group of rogue storytellers and stuff comes and takes her and they're trying to hide her because they're trying to help her harness her power to use it for good because that's what it originally started out as and there is a wonderful character named Mor and he is a pirate and I absolutely love him. Um, this is book one in the Weaver trilogy and I really need book two in my life now. Um, but this was really good. I loved the side characters. I really loved the relationships that they had. Uh, Tanwin got a little annoying because she was so set on doing things her way and she didn't really listen. But I guess she was young and she didn't really know what her stories could do, especially because she didn't grow up with parents. Um, so it was good. I'm really hoping that there's kind of a love triangle, but I would prefer for her to just end up with more, so we're going to start it now. Um, I believe that this will end up in a love triangle, but I'm hashtag team more forever. Uh, he reminded me a bit of Kai from the Unblemished trilogy, and everybody knows how much I love me some Kai, so I definitely preferred him, and I just preferred him over the other guy. From the beginning, I was not a fan of the other guy. So we'll see. I don't know. She couldn't make up her mind between the two. She likes them both. She doesn't like them both. I don't even know. Um, another thing that I wasn't a huge fan of, it was hard for me to jump between everybody. Um, there was a lot of names that I couldn't pronounce because they're fake. And so I was just kind of, they were a jumble in my mind. And then there were switches of perspective between Tanwin and Braith, I believe, and then somebody they called the Dark One, or the one in the cape, or the one in the dark, something like that. There were different perspectives, and the voice didn't really change a whole lot, so the only way I would have known that there was a difference between them is the chapter headings and the fact that perspective of um, 
point of view change. So one was written in first person and one was written in third person and that's really the only way that I would have been able to tell. But overall it was a great story and I'm definitely looking forward to the rest of the series. The next book that I read was The Bachelor Girl's Guide to Murder by Rachel McMillan. I rated this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. It was really interesting. Um, it is a retake on Sherlock Holmes and Watson, but with gender uh, switches. Um, so it's women instead of men. And it was kind of interesting. I liked it. I really enjoyed seeing Toronto because it's based in Toronto, Canada. And I, d I did enjoy it, but I had a hard time with Marinda, who is like Sherlock. And I don't really, I've never read Sherlock. I know I've never read Sherlock Holmes. I've never seen the show. I know it's crazy. I haven't read a ton of classics. So I don't know if Sherlock's character is like Marinda, but she was Bastic. Like she was crazy. She didn't really care about anybody else except her and I don't know like I liked her but she also got on my nerves and then Jemima I liked her but she also kind of got on my nerves and then DeLuca like I liked all the characters but they also kind of got on my nerves. Uh, the storyline the mystery uh, I actually had already guessed who the murderer was and more than anything, it wasn't so much a murder mystery, which I was thinking that it was. It was more along the fact of there was something horrible going on in this time. Um, and I read the back. This is all fiction, but they had something similar to this going on in Canada at the time. But Rachel crafted something called the Morality Club, and they would literally just imprison women for nothing. So more than anything, it was just trying not to get caught by these people or actually trying to get caught by them so that they could question them. And I don't know, it just kind of got old. Like, it's only 250 pages, but I kind of got stuck halfway through and had to keep pushing myself. So, I don't know. Overall, I did like the mystery, um, but at the same time, I kind of was a little bored. I do want to read the rest of the series. I think it'll be cute to read and then Rachel actually has a new series coming out called Hamish Mysteries something like that I can't remember what the series name is but the first book is called Murder at the Flamingo so 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 excited because I do like her style I like that time period I think it's cool to see and cool to read but I don't know I liked it but it wasn't my favorite story does that make sense I hope it does and the last book that I read in the month of June was The Rancher's Surprise Daughter by Jill Lynn. I rated this a 3 out of 5 stars. I might change it to 3.5, but I highly doubt it. Um, I feel terrible. This is another one that I'm so bummed out about because I love Jill. I read her last book and really enjoyed it, and I loved her writing style in this book. But oh my word, I hated, hated, hated the main character. I did not like Kate whatsoever. Um, and I really liked Lucas. I really liked Mackenzie and Emma. And I really liked the side characters and Luke. He was the main male character. But all of that was kind of bogged down by the fact of how much I disliked Kate. I got stuck. It's like the shortest book. I think it's, yeah, it's 215 pages and it took me four days to read, six days to read. I don't even know. It took me forever to read because I got halfway through it and just did not want to pick it up. Kate was getting on my ever living nerves. Um, I, okay. I'm, I need to be nicer about this. I'm sorry. Again, nothing to bash the author. I absolutely love Jill. I just really had a hard time with Kate because she, I understood why they broke up. They were young and naive. Um, and I understood why she hid her daughter from Luke, his daughter from him. Like, I, I get it. But she says that she was a Christian. Like, she found God. And that's great. But she had so much hate for Luke, and she had so much distrust, and she instantly reverted back 
when his trust, when the trust was tested, she instantly reverted back to not trusting him and not listening to anything he said. And I just really can't stand that because there was no proof of the fact, like he had changed and you can literally tell that he changed. So why are we not trusting him right now? Like, why are we struggling? Why are you not letting go? Why are you like this? She was such a control freak. And I get it. I understand protective mama issue, mama bears. I get it. But I don't know. I had a really hard time with her. It just seemed like there was a lot more. Their trust issues went on for so long in the book that they wrapped up way too quickly for me. It just didn't seem realistic um, since trust issues literally went on for 200 pages of this book. The last 15 pages were them falling in love and stuff. I just, I don't know, I had a really hard time with it. Nothing against Jill. I love her books and I will be picking up the other books because I have a feeling they're going to be about the other, the sisters, and I'm very excited for that. But I just really disliked Kate. Um, so as much as I loved the side characters and as much as I loved Luke, it just stinks because I disliked her so much that it kind of ruined the taste of the book for me. It was just really sad. It's a bummer, but I do love Jill and I really loved Luke, so I don't know. I don't know. So overall, I read 10 books in the month of June. That has been my best month so far. I am so proud of myself because I read every book that was on my TBR and actually read two that were not. And I'm really, really proud of myself. I really enjoyed most of the books that I read this month. They were really, really good. I'm really hoping that I can keep up the momentum for the rest of the year and I can read and blow through amazing books for the next half of the year. Very, 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 very hopeful. We'll see. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed seeing what I read in the month of June. You can check out my vlog where I reviewed most of the books that I read this month in full depth and that is for the love of christian fiction .com. and you can also follow my instagram which is for the love of christian fiction where you've seen some of these books on there maybe a couple times i don't know all my other links in the description box below and i think that's it i'll see you guys next week bye